Okay, so today we are going to begin a drawing of yourself on the first day of school. And you want to write your name on your paper and the letter day of your art day, A, B, or C. Flip it over. And I have some stencils here to help you. If you don't want to use these stencils, you don't have to. So I have a stencil um, of a person wearing pants. I have a stencil of a person in more of a dress kind of look. And then I have a stencil of a building. That's going to be Becky David, our school. So you want to lay a stencil down. It doesn't matter what side. I'm going to do this side. And you hold it while you trace. And then I'm going to grab the stencil of the building and I'm going to put that over here on this side. Okay, so now that you have that drawn, now we have to add in details into these shapes because they don't really look like that much yet. So I'm going to add eyes. I'm going to draw two circles. And then inside those circles, I'm going to make a curved line. And I'm going to draw a smiley face. And I'm going to draw a little nose. Okay. Um, then you want to create a shirt. So I'll draw another curved line here. And then if you want long sleeves, you can make them go all the way to your hands. If you want short sleeves, they can go to here. And I'm going to draw a line right here to separate the shirt from the pants or the shorts, whatever you're wearing on the first day of school. And then a line here for shoes. Okay. Um, and then for hair, so um, if you have shorter hair, you could just draw kind of a wiggly line across the top like that, and that could be your shorter hair. On the back, I'll kind of show you what I would do if you have longer hair. All right, so if you have longer hair, you could just make the hair that kind of comes on your forehead a little bit, and you can make it come down on either side until it hits the arms here. If you wear your hair up, like in a ponytail, so let's say this is the head, you could draw the hair that's on your forehead, make a little line, and then make a ponytail that goes up like that. And if you have curly hair, you can make all of these lines more bouncy lines like this. To make it be a bit more curly okay now this is a stencil if you're if you wanted to wear a dress so here I would draw a line here for the top of the dress and then you could draw lines on the sides and then you draw a line right across here and then give yourself some shoes maybe some socks okay and that's how you would do that Alright, now over here you want to add a door onto the school. Make these lines here just to make the school look a little more interesting. And then from there you got to add a ground that you're standing on. So I draw a line, I skip, I skip, I skip, I skip, draw a line, skip, 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 skip. Now it doesn't look like we're floating in midair. Now we're on the ground and it looks like the person is in front of the school because they're a little bigger and the school's a little higher on the paper and kind of far back. Okay, from here now you have to think about details, details. So this is the main thing, this is the subject. Let's talk about details. What else can we put into this image that you remember from the first day of school? So how did you get to school? Think about that. Could you put like a car or a bus in the background? If you walk to school, can you just like make the sidewalk you were walking on? Was it a sunny day? If it was, put the sun in the sky. Was it a cloudy day? If it was, put clouds in the sky. Okay, so I'm going to make a sidewalk here going into school. Um, and then maybe I'll make a school bus behind the person because I don't have a ton of room here. Skip draw. I'm 
remember bushes or trees. Draw these right in front of Becky David and then I'm going to erase the part that's inside the bush. So it looks like the bush is in front of Becky David a little bit. Maybe I'll make a tree over here. How my tree is going off the side of the paper, that's okay. I don't have to put everything in the middle of the paper. Things can go off the edges. Alright, and then I will put a sun in the sky right about here. A little cloud over here in the background, maybe a few clouds. So this is my drawing, um, yourself on the first day of school. And after you draw it with a pencil, we're going to use something called a Sharpie. Um, these are black markers and they are permanent, which means they don't come off um, the paper and they don't come off your clothes if you get them on your clothes. So you got to be safe with this. And notice how I'm just going over all of my pencil marks with the black outline. This is an important step. So you want to stay on your lines the best that you can. If you get off a little bit, that's okay. Now here in the eyes, this curved part, I'm going to color that in. So every single thing, everything that you just drew, you got to go over it again with a Sharpie. And the reason we do this is because we are going to paint this. And if we don't have these big, bold, black outlines of our shapes, it's going to be hard to see. So you have everything outlined with your Sharpie, you want to take one of your chubby erasers and you want to erase your pencil marks that you still see because sometimes we don't get right on the lines and I can still see the pencil and we don't want to do that or we don't want to see the pencil. We want it to look like we drew this whole thing which is the black Sharpie. So you want to think like it should look like a coloring book before you color it in. Get rid of all that pencil stuff. Alright, after you erase all your pencil marks, then you're going to get your crayons out. And we are just going to use crayon only to color in the skin of um, yourself. So in your crayon box, there are different skin tones. So we have kind of like a light, a lighter skin. So you kind of want to put it up to you and see kind of what color matches you the most. If you have darker skin, you'd want to get like a brown or more of a tan in the middle kind of color. So just dig through your crayon box and find colors that could be your skin. And then choose the one you need to use. And color it in. So you want to color in your face. Don't color inside the eyes. And you can color right on top of the Sharpie. The Sharpie isn't going anywhere. And then you want to color in um, anywhere your skin might be showing. So on this one, um, the arms are showing because they're short sleeves. And if you're wearing shorts, you would color also in some of your legs. Or if you're wearing a dress, you would color in some of your legs with your crayon as well. So that is the only thing that we are going to color in with crayon. The reason we do that is because I don't really have the right colors, all of the colors we would need in paint to do that. So we just do skin and crayon. But the rest of this is going to be done in paint. So I need a placemat, an apron, brush, water, and paint. I'm going to use temper cakes for this assignment. I have water and I have two brushes. I have a big one and a small one. Okay, the small one is to get into the tiny areas, the big one is to get into the bigger areas. So I'm going to start on my person here. So let's remember to use temper cakes, we get our brush wet 
and we swirl it not too hard you don't want a bad hair day with your brush then we paint in okay now I have my small brush right now because I'm painting kind of a small shape the hair a big shape would be like the all the grass that would be a big shape but this is a small shape so I use my small brush if I use my big brush on this shape I'm gonna get out of the line so easily because the brush is just too big while I have some black on my brush I might as well go ahead and paint all the things that I want black since I don't so I don't have to rinse it you want to drag your brush, never push it. Never give your brush bad hair. So next I'm going to do the shirt. For that I'm going to use a bigger brush because it's a little bigger of a shape. So I just get that brush wet and I pick the color I want for the shirt. Make sure you go pretty slow around the edges so you don't get out of your lines. Okay, next I'm going to do the school bus, so I'm going to need some yellow. And you want to make sure your brush is completely clean before you put it in the new colors. So see how this yellow is a little dirty? It's because somebody was probably using green and then wanted yellow and put their brush right into yellow and they didn't rinse their brush in between. So you've got to make sure you rinse, otherwise your colors get dirty. Now I'm going back to my small brush so I can get into these small little areas of the school bus. My big brush is too big. Like right under here, it's a tiny little shape. Under here is a tiny little shape. Up here is tiny. And then you can switch to your big brush for the bigger shapes. So just go back and forth. Paint, I want you to notice how I kind of outlined around the edges here. That's going to help you stay in your lines a little better. So now I can go in with a bigger stroke. And I don't have to worry about accidentally getting into the person because I made that edge right there. It's like a little fence to keep you in your lines. So on the school, I'm using a tiny brush. And then I'll go back in with my bigger brush. Okay, now with the sky, I'm using my small brush again to get into the tiny little areas I need to get into, and then I'll use the big brush for the bigger areas, and I'm going to outline a lot of this. So this is probably going to take me the longest, but good art takes time. So take the time. So now that I outlined everything with my small paintbrush, all the blue parts of the sky, now I can go in with my big one and fill in the shapes. And this part will go a little faster than the other part. But I did take my time to do that other part of outlining. So I stay in my lines the best that I can. Okay, I am all complete now drawing um, yourself on the first day of school using paints and a little bit of crayon.